Welcome to Mr Chalk's Revision Tips. In this video we will look at types of pathogen, tuberculosis, HIV, influenza, malaria and meningitis. Pathogen is any sort of microorganism that can cause disease. So specific animal pathogens are infectious agents such as viruses, bacteria and parasites. There are also some fungal diseases. So just to run over how these diseases can cause symptoms, remember that fungal diseases destroy living cells. They go and they break them down in order to digest them and quite often the symptoms will be caused by the body's own immune response against these funguses. Viruses take over cell metabolism. The viral genetic material gets into the host cell and it is inserted into the host DNA. The virus then uses the host cell to make new viruses which burst out and kill the cell. Most bacteria produce toxins and poisons that damage host cells. Some toxins damage host cells by breaking them down or damaging cell membranes and some can cause damage or inactivation to enzymes. So the first disease that we're going to look at is tuberculosis. So TB in the lungs or throat are the only forms of illness that are infectious which means that they can be passed from one person to person. When somebody with TB in their lung or throat coughs or sneezes they send droplets into the air which can contain the tuberculosis bacteria. If you breathe in these bacteria over a long period of time you can go and get infectious with it. So just consider the question what is tuberculosis, pause the video and then have a look at the answer. So tuberculosis is an infectious disease caused by bacteria that usually spreads through the air, usually through coughing. Bovine tuberculosis is the spread from cattle and badgers and to um, other cattle and badgers. This usually happens when animals are in close contact with each other. So animal density is a major factor in the transmission of this infection. Bacteria released into the air through coughing and sneezing can spread the disease through uninfected animals. If an infected badger eats or drinks from cattle feed or water troughs, it can spread tuberculosis bacteria through their saliva, which infects cows when they eat or drink from these contaminated sources. Infected badgers can also spread the bacteria through open wounds and cuts. So, there are three short questions for you to have a think about, work through them, pause the video and then go and review what the answers are. So why do you think it's difficult to prevent the reinfection of cattle when they are out grazing in the fields? The key things that we need to think about and the fact that you can't stop interactions between the cattle. The cattle are out in a large field so you can't necessarily control their movement. They can be reinfected through what they're drinking and they may come into contact with infected badgers. Why do you think people are against culling badgers when thousands of cattle a year are infected with tuberculosis and are then slaughtered. So some of the things that people might think about is talking about the risk to humans contracting bovine tuberculosis from milk 
is extremely low and that cattle and badgers are the only carriers of this form of the disease. The disease can interact between them but cannot be transmitted to other domestic animals. People might also talk about ethical reasons for not going and killing large populations of badgers. And finally, what difficulties might there be against vaccinating a wild population of animals? Some of your answers might go and talk about difficulties in delivering the vaccines, no necessarily um, accurate way of seeing what animals have been vaccinated or still need vaccinating and going you might want to go and talk about the disease mutating so therefore a vaccine would have to be altered over a long period of time HIV so HIV is the human immunodeficiency virus. Right, over time they can cause acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, which is a condition that causes progressive failure of the immune system and allows life-threatening opportunistic infections such as cancers to go and take hold. There are three short questions here for you to think about. Pause the video, have a go at them, and then go and have a look at the answers. So, HIV and AIDS the same thing? The answer is no. HIV is a virus, while AIDS is a stage of advanced infection. Specifically, HIV, or human immunodeficiency virus, is an infectious virus that gradually breaks down a person's immune system, leaving the body less able to defend itself against other viruses, bacteria, fungi and parasites. These infections, which are often called opportunistic, tend to be mild in early stages and can become progressively worse as the immune system is depleted. Can HIV live outside the body? In short, not for very long. Compared with other types of viruses, the HIV virus is relatively fragile and can be broken down by exposure to ultraviolet radiation from the sun, changes in pH levels, and an entire range of different things. And which activities are most likely to transmit HIV. So the three main routes of HIV infection in the United States, which has been recorded, would be by anal sex, vaginal sex, or by sharing needles when taking drugs. Unprotected anal sex poses the highest risk. Influenza, commonly known as flu, is an infectious disease caused by an influenza virus. Symptoms can be mild or severe. The most common symptoms include a high fever, runny nose, sore throat, muscle and joint pain, headache, coughing and feeling tired. These symptoms typically begin within two days of exposure of the virus and most often last roughly a week or so, but it can last longer in more severe cases. So here there are three short questions. Pause the video, have a go at them, then go and have a look at the answers. So what causes the influenza? In short, a virus that enters the upper respiratory system and binds onto the cell using antigens on its surface. Specifically, it uses the haemagglutinin and neuraminidase antigen. What are the symptoms of influenza? High fever, runny nose, sore throat, muscle and joint pain, headache, coughing 
and feeling tired. And finally, how is influenza spread? Influenza viruses are spread mainly by tiny droplets made with the flu in them when people cough or sneeze. Less often a person might get it by touching a surface or an object that has the flu virus in a water droplet that is sitting on it and then they can go and touch mucous membranes including the mouth, nose and possibly eyes. So, this set of three short questions relates to this small case study. Synoptic influenza refers to a disease caused by animal influenza viruses that cross into human populations, so cross that human-animal divide and infect people. People can be infected with influenza viruses that are usually circulating in animal populations such as avian influenza which goes and splits into subtypes A, H, N1 and A, H, 9, N2 and swine influenza virus which splits into the subtypes A, H1, N1 and A, H3, N2. Other species, including horses and dogs, also have their own variants of influenza viruses. Even though these viruses are named as the same subtype of virus found in humans, all of these animal viruses are distinct from human influenza viruses and do not transmit easily. H1N1 is virus, not a bacteria. Why does this make it more dangerous? So, some of your answers might go and focus on the fact that viruses infect cells. Viruses take over the cells to produce more of it. Because the virus is inside the cell, it is hard to get medicines inside of them to stop the virus. And viruses mutate more rapidly than bacteria. So therefore, new strains that we are not immune to can evolve over a short period of time. Explain how DNA technology helps dealing with new strains of influenza. So the DNA of new viruses can be mapped rapidly. The genome of the virus can be shared quickly. And from this genome, a vaccine can be reversed engineered which can then be spread and tested on humans. And finally, how does the transmission of new strains of influenza differ from other pathogens that are transmitted? So influenza A viruses are typically or that typically infect and transmit among animal species sometimes can cross over from animal species to human species. Avian influenza A viruses may be transmitted from animals to humans in two main ways. Directly from birds of avian influenza A or virus contaminated environments which people may come into contact with. Malaria is caused by a plasmodium parasite which is spread from female mosquitoes. These are known as night biting mosquitoes because this is when they are most commonly out. The parasite enters the bloodstream and travels to the liver. The infection then develops in the liver and re-enters the bloodstream and attacks red blood cells. So some of the symptoms include fever, chills, sweating, vomiting, muscle pains and diarrhea. There are two short questions here for you to think about. Pause the video and then go and have a look at the possible answers. 
So there are four main types of malaria that can infect humans. They're all spread by what? So they're all spread by mosquito bites. We need to think about the fact that these are female mosquitoes that are feeding on blood whilst they are reproducing. Once malaria parasites enter the bloodstream, which organs do they travel to? Simply put it, they will go and migrate to the liver. The final type of human disease that we need to have a quick look at is meningitis. So meningitis is the inflammation of the membranes that surround the meninges in the brain and spinal cord. So the bacteria that cause meningitis can also cause septicemia. Right, remember that septicemia is blood poisoning. Symptoms of meningitis include being sick, a headache, stiff neck and dislike of bright light. You may also get a rash. Meningitis is usually treated with antibiotics in hospital. It's really important that treatment is started as soon as possible to stop any more prominent things caused by the bacteria such as septicemia from occurring. Thanks for watching. 